Ah, I see you guys have made it to part two of the Infernal Combustion Engine build series, where we take this old refrigeration compressor and turn it into an internal combustion engine. Now, obviously, I don't know if this is going to work yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work because, well, I built the one out of copper pipe and JB Weld piston, and that works pretty good. So I can't see why this isn't going to work. But what we're actually going to be doing in this part is going to make or break this project. So it'll either make this into a successfully running engine or it's going to send it to the scrapyard because what we're going to be doing is drilling holes in the cast iron castings in the cylinder wall actually because a two-stroke internal combustion engine it doesn't have normal valves like the type that open at the top and there's a cam that drives it instead the piston acts as the valve so what you have is a hole on each side of the, the cylinder and as the piston moves past those it opens and closes them So this is your basic two-stroke internal combustion engine. You have your crankcase, you have your crank, you have your piston, your cylinder, spark plug, exhaust port, transfer passage and intake port, small reed valve here for the intake. You have your carburetor, which is essentially just adding fuel to the air that's coming in. All right, so let's say the piston is moving up. What's happening behind the piston? Well, it's creating a vacuum back there. It's creating a vacuum in the whole crankcase. That's pulling on this check valve here, or actually atmosphere is pushing on that check valve, which is going to open that check valve to equalize the pressure. So now you have fuel air mixture that's getting sucked into the crankcase as the piston is moving up. It's sucking more fuel air mixture in there. At the same time, it's also compressing the fuel air mixture up here. It keeps compressing it until you're at top dead center. At top dead center, now the spark plug fires, or really slightly before top dead center, but we don't really need to worry about that right now. At, at the right time, the spark plug fires. That creates a combustion in here, which creates hot gases, expands, starts pushing the piston down. So now the piston is moving down. What's happening back here? Well, that's compressing this because the check valve won't let it go that way. It only lets stuff go in, not out. So you're compressing your fuel air mixture in the crankcase. So it keeps moving down, it keeps moving down. This is pressurized gas up here. Look right there what's happening. See that? The exhaust port is opening. And it opens before the intake port. As you can see, the intake port is slightly lower than the exhaust port. So all of this pressurized burnt gases are escaping out of the exhaust, which is good. So that's equalizing the pressure, decreasing the pressure in here. The piston's still moving down. It's still compressing the fuel air mixture down here. Now look what's happening. This is starting to get uncovered. What's happening then? Well, now the pressurized fuel air mixture in the crankcase can rush through the transfer passage and through the intake port, pushing out the rest of the exhaust and filling this up with a new charge of fuel air mixture. So now we're all ready for another stroke. So the piston starts moving up again. It repaces the cycle, creates a vacuum down here, pulls fuel air mixture into the crankcase, keeps moving up, compressing your fuel air mixture up here. It fires the fuel air mixture up here, forcing this down. It pressurizes the crankcase as it's moving down. It's, ex it's using the energy from the compressed gases up here or from the burnt burning gases up here. Now the, bur the burnt fuel air mixture is ex exhausting out of the exhaust port. It moves down slightly more. Now if the intake were to open first, then you're going to expel all of your hot burnt burning fuel probably into the uh, crankcase which is going to cause an explosion so you need to have the exhaust port open first then the intake port now how much of a lag there is between these i don't actually know we're just going to kind of wing it now here are two cylinder designs one of them would work and the other one would work much more efficiently so this is the one that would work probably but the flaw in it is that the fuel air mixture when it gets introduced, it's just kind of going to flow straight across the top of the piston and right out the exhaust. And that's actually why two strokes are not particularly efficient and they create a lot of emissions because you have this fuel air mixture that's leaking out of the exhaust. Now this is a slightly better design over here and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill the intake hole at an angle so that the velocity of this gas will kind of loop up here pushing the rest of the exhaust out and I'm hoping that'll be slightly more efficient. I'm thinking to drill a hole through here for the exhaust and then another hole on the other side so right about here for the intake. Now what I'm gonna have to 
it's going to be really hard to do that with the piston in there. Um, I mean, I could do it with the piston in there, but the problem is that I won't be able to deburr it very easily, and then the piston is going to get all galled up. So I really need to take the piston out. Now, it looks like the only way to take the piston out is to take the crank out. And to get the crank out, it looks like it's pressed onto the armature. I'm gonna take a steel rod and pound it out. So I've removed the armature, so now what we can do is take the engine apart the rest of the way. So let me push the piston out here, and we should be able to just, yep, this just comes right out. And so there's our crank, and you can see the oil passages and everything like that. You can see the big oil passage right here to get oil all in those bearings there. It's a pretty simple design. It's all cast iron, really well built. And the tolerances on this are just phenomenal. And then, so here's the piston. So as you can see, we've got our pin in there, knuckle pin or whatever you call it, and there's another oil passage. So that oil passage probably goes through, all the way through, and probably comes out here. So that just adds oil, gets oil all to the piston and the cylinder. And so there's our casting. So it, it's amazingly, like, I don't know if it's ground or what, it's like amazing finish though. It's like really smooth and the piston seems to have a really good seal, it's really tight, there's no slop at all. It's awesome. Like, this is phenomenally perfect. Like, I couldn't ask for something better. So then I have this little thing that I made, it's called a depth gauge. Homemade depth gauge. So pretty much it's just some random pieces of metal soldered together. And a bit of coat hanger wire. So what I've got is a point on the end there. And what I will do is put that against the piston. I will lay that up against the casting, the top of the head there, top of the casting, tighten that down. Now we've got our depth, and we don't even have to measure it or anything. And now what I can do is I can use the sharp point on there to kind of scribe a line here where the top of the piston is at lowest point. Okay, so here's the idea. So the piston here, this line that we marked there, that's going to be the, the lowest the piston will be. So we want the, because we're going to be putting the intake at a slight angle, uh, actually a pretty good angle. Um, we're actually going to want that to be slightly lower because, well, the distance of that. So I'm going to actually just kind of make it, make another mark that's slightly lower. I don't know, probably about eighth of an inch lower. So right about there, that's actually where we want our intake. At least that's where I'm going to start drilling it. So we're going to start on the mine and drill in at an angle. So let's make some marks here. So I'm thinking I actually want two intake and two exhaust. That's kind of what I'm going for at least. If we have two, we have one right there. Often small engines have two or three uh, exhaust holes or they have a super wide one. Since we're really only going to be able to drill a hole, we're going to make two holes. And yes, I'm just using an old drill bit that I sharpened real good as a center punch because I don't have a center punch actually. Let's put a piece of wood or something in here so that when we drill through, we don't hit the other side of the cylinder. I think it's time to start drilling. What are we waiting for, right? So obviously you want to start with a smaller drill bit and then work up to your larger drill bit. So this is a 3 16 so I'm going to use a real small, like 1 8 Actually, it's smaller than 1 8 Whatever this is, 1 16th or something, I don't know. Whatever size it is. And since this is cast iron, you really don't have to use coolant, at least, especially if we're just drilling. What are we waiting for, right? Yeah, they're about lined up. Okay, so now we just want to start drilling at about the right angle. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Think that'll work? Let's get you guys a better shot. Here goes nothing. And we're through. Alright, so hopefully you guys can see that. 
So they're a little bit higher than I would have liked. Three sixteenths, straight through. That was easy. Hey, they combined. Let's see if we can make them one. Well, that'll work. All right, I'm happy with that. That looks pretty good. Uh, you can see how much science there is to this. There's uh, not much. It's pretty much drilling holes. Does that look like an intake port to you? It does to me. Perfect. Test it out. And obviously, because of the burrs, the piston is not going to fit. Yeah, it's hitting the burrs. Try the piston again. No better. It actually fits by now. It's still pretty tight, but... It's a little bit of grabbing there. There we go. Now it fits. Okay, so now let's mark the hole for the exhaust. So I actually made another pointy bit for my depth gauge, so slightly longer one. So what I'm going to do is pretty much just adjust this so that it's slightly below the top of the intake port, and that's where we will center our holes for the exhaust. So, I don't know. Do I look like a professional? Can you guys see that? Good. So right about there, I think I'm going to put the exhaust holes. So now we gotta center them here somewhere. Derp. Almost easier than aluminum. Really? Yeah. Size three sixteenths. We can combine them. All right, we have an exhaust port thing. Oh, now, sweet. So pretty stiff. So the way I figured out the port timing in this video is pretty much just eyeballing it and winging it. Well, there's a far better way, and that's using a port timing chart. So you can just download this from uh, Google and print it out. Just look up two-stroke port timing chart and you will find it. And so pretty much line up top dead center when the piston is at top dead center, and then you can turn it and figure out when the ports are supposed to open. So right now is when the intake port is okay so the so the intake port there is opening right there so that's when the exhaust port should be opening so the exhaust port is already fully open and if we line the exhaust port up and look at take a look at that okay so exhaust port is opening right there so i mean it's opening a good 20 degrees early 20 30 degrees op early i don't think that's necessarily bad i think it's going to work just fine yeah it's opening way too early but I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot that I could do with this particular compressor, just because of the way it's designed. So I think it'll work just fine. All right, so you guys have successfully made it to the end of part two of the compressor to internal combustion engine series. So as you can see, we made the exhaust and intake ports. So it took a bit of planning, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. The cast iron was very easy to drill, a lot easier than I expected. I would even rate it easier than aluminum to drill. I mean, it was so easy. So that shouldn't scare you at all, just drilling those holes. That was easy. Um, so the next part, which is part three, we're going to be manufacturing the head. Um, so we're going to be taking this aluminum heat sink, and I think that's what I'm going to use, 
um, and we're going to be needing to tap a spark plug into it. So these are pretty commonly available, I'm just going to be using them because it's a nice thick piece of aluminum, or almost a half inch thick. But you can see there's a couple different varieties here. This one's a little bit thin, so I'm going to use one of these two. Probably this one because it's a bit smaller. Um, I think it's an AMD heatsink, which is just a $4 spark plug. I figured, well, $4, it's a mini spark plug, so it's much better suited for this engine size than like your regular car spark plug. Like this is just huge. This is much better size. So we're going to be using this spark plug and making a head for the engine. So that's the next video. Stay tuned for that. Don't forget to give it a like, comment, and subscribe below. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and keep experimenting. Focus you. Let on the camera. There you go. All right, so you can see there. Yeah, it'll be good enough. Good enough for government work.